Hello and welcome back to Planescape Torment with me Barden. So for me this is a new play session so it means that I'm going to have to refresh myself with where we are but also that any voices that I used before are probably going to be different this time around so um, please forgive me for that but bear with us. So what I'm going to do now is just um, go around talking to the um, zombies and skeletons in this door to see if we can get anything else because all we've done so far I believe is examine them. So pardon me, have you seen any skeletons walking around here? Okay, so nothing I'm there. Gone. Let's continue on. Okay, let's go down this way. parts of the map that we haven't been to down here. And more to still way faster than us because obviously we um, the sky is still disguised as a zombie. Okay, so let's try this guy. The reanimated corpse has had its lips sewn together and the number 310 carved into its brow. The smell of formaldehyde permeates the area around it. It turns its lifeless eyes upon you as you move to Bard's path. Okay, so I don't think it's going to say anything, but let's try. So seeing anything interesting going on? And uh, nothing. Okay, so let's leave you in peace and continue on our merry way. So where else? Oh, we've got some area down here. Ah, there's someone over here as well. Hello, Mr. Zombie Worker. Wait up a second until we get to you. Please don't go. Oh, yeah, you can come towards us. That's fine. Okay. Despite this corpse's dry, leathery skin, it's clear that this was once a beautiful woman of middle years. Whomever prepared the corpse seemed to take pity on her, sewing her her brow lips, her bow lips shut with small, neat stitches and tattooing the number 832 upon her forehead in elegant script. So maybe someone um, for Mort to get um, acquainted with. So doing anything later? No, okay. So sorry Mort buddy, we tried, but she, no interest in you. Okay, we've got a room down here. And we've got a skeleton. Let's try and intercept Mr. <laughs> Mort was pushing the skeleton along. Hey, hey, hold up. Okay, the skeleton turns to face you. 42 has been chiseled into its forehead. A number of its bones, mostly the jaws and joints, have been bound with leather straps. A black smock is draped over its body. Now, for anyone who's read um, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you probably know that 42 was pretty important there. And um, we've seen that number before as well in this game. I think this is the corpse I had the memory about. Yeah, so that memory is when we were with Eveen or Iveen. At the sound of your voice, the skeleton suddenly straightens up. It crosses its arms over its chest, its fingers hook into its ribcage. Okay, so I think that's the vision we had where we crossed and uncrossed our arms. So maybe we should cross our arms as well. So cross your arms over your chest. In response, the skeleton drops its arms to its side. Then the leather cord securing the skeleton's torso snap and the ribcage folds outwards like a pair of double doors. Okay, let's reach into the ribcage and feel around. To your surprise, your hand vanishes as you reach inside the ribcage. You have a strange feeling it's somewhere else. So I've never played D&D. It's something that I want to do, but I believe um, like this is based in the D&D universe. I believe there's just something called a bag of holding, which is kind of, I guess, similar to the TARDIS from Doctor Who, where the items in it are kind of in a, on a different plane or I don't know exactly sure, but it's not exactly here. 
As you reach inside the ribcage, your hand bumps against an invisible object. It's about the size of a fist and seems to be attached to the skeleton spine. Well, let's take the item out then. As you pull the item out, the skeleton suddenly disintegrates and the iron bolt securing its joints clatters to the floor. Wherever this item was, it seems to have been the only thing holding it together. Well, sorry for you, Mr. Skeleton. Obviously, 42 wasn't uh, significant for you. It looks like an unremarkable lump of iron. You can't imagine why someone would hide it inside the ribcage of a skeleton. Well, let's examine the piece of iron. Okay, well, we got some experience, which is nice. As you play both your hands on the lump of iron to examine it, there is a hiss, hiss and the metal evaporates, leaving behind a strange dagger, a handful of coins wrapped in dirty cloth, and two bloody teardrops. These look like they were inside the lump of iron. Okay, very nice. Let's take the items and leave. Very sorry for you. Oh, there's something else here as well. What is it? It's a wooden club. Yeah, we don't really want a wooden club. Thank you. But thank you all the same. So let's go down to this room. That, oh, there's a guy here. Let's go say hi to this chap. Yeah, that's it. Mort, block him. Block him in. Come on, Mort. Stop him. Stop him, Mort. We need to get to him. Good. Okay, Mr. Zombie, we need to talk to you. The number 613 are... The number 613 are cut deeply into this plodding corpse's forehead, but an inch of, of shredded leather skin separates the one and the three. Looking closely, you can barely make it a two carved there. So it's actually six, one, two, three. Okay. So seen anything interesting going on? Nothing. Okay. So we leave you be and we'll avoid the dust man there. Or it looks like a dust lady, but I guess they don't make a distinction. Okay, let's get ourselves in here. So we got some things to look at, which is nice. And we've also got, so why are these three like in a lineup here? Is it some kind of um, identity parade or something? So which was the one that mugged you, eh? This animated skeleton smells horrible. I guess all of them smell horrible, don't they? As if it's been only freshly stripped and prepared. Its jaw and major joints are tightly bound with leather straps and a rough smock has been thrown over it. The number 1221 has been chiseled into its forehead. Okay, well, let's examine it carefully. Someone has taken care to bind the bones of the skeleton with leather straps woven around the body in such a pattern that they resemble muscles and tendons. The straps are secured to metal bolts punched into the skeleton's joints. This skeleton looks like it has been a gr seen a great deal of service. Many of its bones are chipped and its numerous fractures are bound with sealant and foul smelling glue. Okay, let's try and pry out the skeleton's joint bolts. Okay, so nothing, so we don't, still don't have a tool for that. So let's say hi to this zombie. This looks to be the corpse of a well-aged, even ancient woman. Aside from the embalming fluid stink, the sits is seen in her mouth and number 679 sits onto her right cheek. It's likely she looks only slightly different from now than she did in her final years. <laughs> That's not much of not really a compliment, is it? Um, I'm not sure Mort wants her to speak back, but let's give it a go. So doing anything later? No. So probably a sigh of relief from Mort. Right, so this final zombie here then. The corpse's meaty head was clearly severed at some point and hastily sewn back on. Several different sets of stitching are all in various states of unraveling seem to indicate that the head 
is constantly being knocked back off and reattached during the course of its work. And number 79 has been cut into its temple, circumscribed by a fang circle that appears to have been branded on its forehead. Well, let's examine the fang circle then. The fang circle looks like it was branded on the corpse's forehead long ago, presumably before it died. It might be a religious icon of some sort or a rite of passage. You notice that one of the recesses between the inner fangs has a small triangle within it, as if it has some special significance. So special significance and triangle. So the only triangle we've come across so far is the earring that we got from folding and unfolding that note. So maybe they are um, related. Hmm, interesting. How did the mark get there, Corpse? Updated my journal. The Corpse makes no reply. It looks like it is too far gone to answer any of your questions. Okay, let's leave him, please. But our journal has been updated, so... Where is our journal? Here we go, journal. Okay, journal. Found a strange fang circular symbol on the forehead of Zombie 79. For some reason, the mark struck me as important, but I don't know why. Okay, so then can we... Can't do anything with that. Okay, so that hasn't changed. Okay, can we examine you again? Okay, so then let's leave the corpse. Let's check these places here. So that one's locked. Okay, so then we got Dustman's request. Oh, that reminds me, we've got another note as well, don't we? So let's um, have a look at the notes that we have in our inventory. So the other one was the task list. Someone has penned a series of tasks in red ink on this scrap of parchment. I would like the contracted workers to be inspected thrice daily at the end of each work shift. When the new initiates come on duty, or when the new initiates come on duty. We have experienced too many contracted collapses while engaged in heavy labor as of late and I fear the embalming enchantments initially used on the corpses may be decaying or may have been warped somehow. If the contracted workers could be inspected every eight hours and raised if they have collapsed, then this would prevent the backlog of shells in the preparation rooms and free up more contracted workers for other duties. Oh, and is there more? Oh, there is more. Okay. I do not wish collapsed bodies to be disposed of when, po when possible. The original contracted shell shells are to be raised and be made to resume their duties. I have included spare embalming charms within the shelves for the initiates on duty. They are to be used only when the shells cannot be repaired with stitching, bandaging, or applications of embalming fluid. Okay, and how about this one? This one's request. A note written on a scrap of dry parchment. Contact the necromancer responsible for raising contractual worker 42. That's the skeleton uh, that we just encountered um, outside and ripped apart, taking a bit of iron from them. I know he's um, examined the skeleton before, but I am certain the initial raising of the body was warped. The worker still responds to commands, but when it has completed the task, it resumes pacing in the same circular pattern as it did before. Okay. Dal recently informed me that worker 42 exhibited the, that same walking pattern when it was a zombie decades ago, there may be a soul echo in the marrow of the skeletons or the mar or the skeleton's age may have caused the magic animating him to decay. One of the initiatives suggested maybe following an order issued by a higher ranking dustman in the past, but I found no records of such an order. Rather the reason for his behavior, the matter is to be resolved or the worker replaced. 
Okay. So that's those notes. Now let's check here. Okay, we've got an iron pry bar. Okay. And then we have nothing. Okay, so the pry bar. Um, let's have a look here. Let's pop that there instead. Okay, put that there. That doesn't look like a pry bar. Let's see then if this will work to take the skeleton apart. Yeah, try and pry out the skeleton's joint bolts. Using your pry bar, you rip the bolts from the skeleton's joint. The skeleton collapses. Some of its bones still twitching. Sorry about that bones. Okay, what did we get? Another wooden club. <laughs> Okay, no thank you. Wasn't really worth it, was it? Okay, let's go here. Um, let's select the weapon, this one. Let's try that. Right there we go. So, we've got a couple of cloth charms and some copper. Okay, and I need to, I think, give some stuff to Mort. So, let's give Mort the left arm, the junk, um, picking up the cloth charms. This, what is this iron spike? In there? This is a crude iron spike covered with rust. If necessary, you could use it as a dagger. Okay, um, yeah, you can have that then, Mort. Not that I don't, because he doesn't have arms, I don't think he can use, no, he can't look, he can't use those things. Okay, but he can have them at least. Now let's continue on our way. Okay, let's check here. I think we already checked that one. You there, hello. Hello to you too, lady. Oh. I'm not um, in the zombie anymore. Oh, probably because I equipped um, a different weapon. Okay, so I guess we have to be more careful now. So I think we talked to these guys before. The number 1146 is carved into the forehead of this walking corpse. His lips are sewn together, coarse black thread. The entire body is covered in horrible scars, worse even than your own, as if its owner has been burnt, burned to death. Its nose, ears and several digits are missing, presumably charred away in some long ago conflagra conflagration. As you block its path it, to get its attention, it stops and gazes at you with vacant eyes. So seen anything interesting going on? The corpse continues to stare at you. So obviously he hasn't seen anything interesting. Otherwise it would have told us. Okay, this skeleton looks like it has seen a great deal of action, either because of combat or falling down one too many staircases, but its arms and legs have been broken and are built with the aid of leather straps and thin iron rods. The front of his skull bears the number 863, but the back of his skull has caved in forming an empty cavity oh this is the one that we took the note out of isn't it yeah sorry about taking that parchment but i doubt you would have delivered it anytime soon okay makes no reply stay healthy okay so i think have we done all of these before have we done that one done that one Okay, that one's locked, so let's bust it open. Nice. Okay, so we've got some more coppers. Ah, we got a bone charm, nice. And what's this corpse fly charm? Sounds delicious. Okay, let's see what it is. Where do we get the leather? This leather strap used to bind skeleton worker. Oh, did we get that from... 
the guy we pulled apart, I guess. Okay, what's this? This corpse fly looks like it was frozen. It appears to be dead, but you can't be sure. The magic contained within the charm is activated when the insect is consumed. When swallowed, the recipient suddenly becomes extremely nauseous. A few seconds later, the charmed individual expels a stream of insects from their nose and mouth. Provided the charmed individual can keep their wits about them after the casting, the caster can send this cloud to attack a target. Okay, so there's something we could use. Then bone charm, plus two to armor class, plus two to armor class versus crushing attacks, plus 15% resistance to crushing attacks, weight is zero. This old finger bone charm has been hollowed out and tiny symbols have been scratched onto its surface. A user must snap it in two to activate it. When snapped, the bone charm temporarily strengthens the user's skeleton and acts as a ward against breaks and fractures. The charm gives the user an overall bonus to their armor class and additional resistance against crushing attacks. Okay. So we might use that at some point in the future. And there's nothing there. Okay. So I think we checked everything on this floor. So let's get ourselves off here. Let's just check this one. Okay. Yeah, they're shining on us now, so. Oh. Does this man regard you with a stony gaze? Are you lost? No, of course I'm not. If you're not lost, what is your business here? That is none of your concern. I awoke on one of the slabs in your preparation room. I'm here to see someone. I was here for an interment, but there seems to have been a mistake. Okay, so I think I would tell him to get lost. He's probably not going to like that. Um, let's see. If I tell him that I woke in the preparation room, he's probably not going to like that either. I'm here to see someone. Well, here, well, who would I be here to see? Unless... Well, I can't really say that I was here to see the spy, because then they'd be wondering, well, what are you doing with a spy? So, let's go with this one. I was here for an interment, but there seems to have been a mistake. Who was being interred? Perhaps the services are taking place somewhere else in the mortuary. You must have understood the mistaken interment was me. That that could be. Where are these other services taking place? Can you show me the way out? Um, which let's ask. Can you show me the way out? I will summon a guard to direct you out. Hold a moment. Okay, let's wait. The dustman takes a step back, then claps his hands together sharply three times. In response, a great iron bell starts tolling throughout the mortuary. Alright then. Oh, now we're being attacked. Oh, this is not good. Okay, let's run. Okay, so I think that we... Maybe, um, maybe we picked the wrong thing there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reload and get back to the point where we're speaking to him again. Uh, so do all the other stuff that I was doing and then bring you back um, once we're back at that point. So yeah, because everything's gonna, going to attack us again. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so um, we're back now. I've basically done all of the stuff that I did before and we, I have this time saved. So we're about to get intercepted. The dustman regards you with a stony gaze. Are you lost? No. If you are not lost, what is your business here? I was here for an interment, but there seems to have been a mistake. Who was being interred? Perhaps the services 
are taking place somewhere else in the mortuary. That could be. Where are these other services taking place? Several internment chamber chambers line the perimeter of the mortuary. They follow the curve of the wall on the first and second floors. Do you know the name of the, of the deceased? Okay, so... Yes or no? I suppose it has to be yes. Yes. The dustman waits. Okay, so we could... Um, lie the name is uh, Ada or pardon I misspoke I don't know the name of the deceased okay let's try lying that name is not familiar to me check with one of the guides at the front gate they may be able to direct you better than I very well I will do that farewell this man nods then returns to his duties let's walk away okay so we are very lucky I guess Okay, so I think we are now finished on this floor and um, so let's get ourselves down and I think we're pretty much done for this episode as well so um, myself the nameless one and Mort here really do hope to see all of you next time goodbye